I grew up on the banks of a river in Guyana in South America. The house we lived in had a thatched roof, and in that house there was no electricity, or record players, or radio, or television. But of course there wasn't any sign of a computer on the horizon. So this thatched roof house we lived in tended to attract natural creatures to its natural surface, but that's another story. But this uh, way of growing up uh, was powerful in many ways. It was tough, but I think it made myself and my siblings uh, self-reliant and uh, very creative too. Uh, but the one legacy that came from that upbringing where we didn't have any gadgets around was that I think we acquired then a fear of uh, newfangled machines which was to come back again and again through the years since that time. At twelve and a half uh, I left that river to go to high school in the capital city Georgetown and I had a very early encounter with new technology. I was waiting for someone at this bottom house as they call it. Some of the houses there are on pillars and um, uh, someone can or people can walk under the house between those pillars and sometimes there's a thriving bottom house culture that happens down there. Anyways, waiting down there and looking around me and when I looked up to the underbelly of the floor above me, I saw these wires in the socket. So of course I stuck my finger up in the socket and of course was blasted by this rude jolt of electricity. I had many more adventures there in Guyana before I left, but uh, at the age of 20, uh, I left Guyana to come and live in Canada. And of course, talk about culture shock and technological shock. I uh, had many, a race, you know, with my cup outstretched, trying to catch the chocolate stream and lost many, many times at vending machines before I got the hang of that and then I survived that into this more recent telephone culture you know the um, press one, press two, press yourself telephone culture which to this day I am not a fan of I'd rather talk to a human being at the other end of the phone line anyway I've survived that too and um, fast forward to the year 2002 I'd been an artist all these years and I'd never gone near a computer and that fear that I brought from me, brought with me from living on, on the river in Guyana was flaring, you know, when I began to think of that I might acquire a computer. But I managed to push that fear back and said, no, it's time. Uh, a computer could be a magnificent tool for you as a creative artist. You could do all kinds of creative things. So I acquired a a shiny new eMac and of course it uh, revolutionized my life. I learned to make digital pictures on it and from that I learned to make covers for my CDs and many many other wonderful things and um, then in um, the end of January 2006 I acquired a little digital still camera with a video option and I noticed it had a video option but again the fear of newfangled machines made me hold back from trying out the video option until one evening I did and I quite liked the pictures the video that I got back the sound was a, of course a small camera sound and that uh, started me into making videos and um, so I made a cluster of videos uh, earlier in, in 2006 after I had acquired the camera but then went on to work on two books that I was working on and left it for the rest of 2006. Then in 2007 
I began to hear about YouTube, this uh, place online where you could upload your videos. And when I discovered that I could make uh, the file format on my computer that would be uploadable to YouTube, that was a vital piece of information I acquired. Uh, but still, I kept postponing uploading my Pretty Brown video, which was one of the first ones that I made. And uh, because again, the old fear of newfangled things, don't do this, you're going to be struck down if you try to upload your video to YouTube or whatever else. Anyway, I, I did, uh, in the wee hours of one morning, it was a very f solitary feeling. And sure enough, the next day, I was able to see my pretty brown video on YouTube, which uh, gave me quite a boost and opened up the way to make other videos. And since then, I've been making videos constantly. I've made many, and I think right now there are 11 of them on YouTube. So one of the reasons for um, making this video, which is called Thatched Roof to YouTube, is to, in a small way, chart this journey of mine from living on the banks of a tropical river in a thatched roof home without any technology remotely close to what is available now to um, having making videos and being able to upload them to YouTube. I'm also a blogger and um, so one of the purposes of this video is to thank these groups that I call the playing field levelers like YouTube and blogger and so on. These groups that have given universal access to human beings to express themselves and I'm very appreciative of that. I'm very thankful for it. And so I'd like to thank them and uh, for giving millions of people a chance to express themselves. And even more importantly to me as an artist, as a creative artist, a chance to show some of their creations on a level playing field. So thanks to you YouTube and Blogger and all the rest you're providing a wonderful service to humankind. Thank you.